All right, uh, hello everybody. Welcome back to OpenGL OpenTK Programming. So here's where we left off. We have a triangle on the screen, and we made it so every vertex now has a position and a color. Uh, so we're still drawing in normalized device coordinate space, which means that we're specifying we're not doing any transformations to the vertices. And I think that'll be something we do next time. Uh, today, what I'd like to do is talk about the index buffer. All right, and the index buffer is something that allows us to store vertices very efficiently. Um, as our shapes start to get more complex, I want to get rid of storing triangles or triangle order in the vertex buffer itself and move that to something called the index buffer. And the index buffer makes it so we don't have to store vertices twice in order to draw triangles. We can store them one time and then reference them multiple times in the index buffer as triangles. And also the index buffer will store the actual triangle order information. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what an index buffer is and how to create one. And then we'll move on to how do we code an index buffer. Okay, so I'm in the drawing program here and I drew a shape. This is a shape that I'd like to have by the end of the video. I wanna have a rectangle or a, a box and here's the coordinates that we're using. And we're, again, we're still in normalized device coordinates. Uh, next time we should be able to move into screen space coordinates when we're specifying our vertices and how to do that transform in the vertex buffer. But for now, let's just make the coordinates look like this. And if we want to do, currently without an index buffer, if we want to make a shape that looks like this, we have to have two triangles, okay? So here would be one triangle, and then here would be another triangle down here. And we'd have to have six vertices to do that. Well, if you look at this, um, I can kind of put a line here to divide these. Uh, here would be one triangle, and here would be another triangle. And it would go zero, this would be zero, this would be one, and this would be two. And then three would be back up here. Uh, four would be back down here. And then five would be over here. And you can see we're using these two vertices twice. But if we don't have an index buffer, we, that's what we have to do. We have to make every three vertices in the vertex buffer a new triangle. So we can actually do that more efficiently by specifying what's called an index buffer. And if we have an index buffer, triangle order in the vertex buffer pretty much goes away. We don't need to, we don't need to specify the vertices in any particular order. We just need to have the vertex data there. And then inside the index buffer, we can specify which vertices are triangles. Okay, so let me get rid of this number ordering right here. And so here's our index buffer. So the index buffer is going to have six items. Every three is going to contain a new triangle. And so 0, 1, and 2, index 0, 1, and 2 in the index buffer will be the first triangle, and then index 3, 4, and 5 will be the next triangle. And by doing this, we only need to store the exact four vertices in the shape itself. We don't need to store them twice. So let's see which ones are duplicates and get rid of the duplicates. So zero is here, uh, one is here, and two is here. Three actually goes back up here, so we do not need that one anymore because it's a duplicate. Uh, four is here, which is also number two, so we don't need that one because that's a duplicate. And then the index five is here, which is a brand new one, so we need to keep that. And so we only have now four vertices that are the actual vertices of our shape. And then we can use the index buffer to tell the graphics card how to draw the triangles or how to fill in this shape. So let's go ahead and erase this five because this is now going to be number index number three. And now we have our four vertices of our rectangle. And so inside the index buffer, we just need to now indicate what the triangles look like. And for me, I'm drawing in clockwise winding order, and it's always uh, important to use the same winding order every time you draw. You can use counterclockwise or you can use clockwise, but just make sure you're using the same winding order for everything you draw. So clockwise winding order is, uh, we're basically following a clock and going around in this order here. Uh, we're gonna start here with number zero. In fact, let's draw the index here. So in the vertex buffer, this is index number zero. This would be one. This would be two, and this would be three. And again, I'm just matching up these numbers here uh, with the picture. Okay, so it looks something like that. So in order to draw these triangles now, we I want to tell the index buffer what are the uh, indices of the triangle in the vertex buffer. At index zero, we want to draw start with this one here. And so that'll be zero, 
Uh, then we're going to go to one. Then we're going to go to two. Uh, next, our next triangle is going to start at zero again because that's just where I want to start it. And again, it doesn't matter where I start as long as I go in clockwise winding order or counterclockwise, depending on the way you've chosen to do it. So the next vertex index, I'm going to go back to zero for the starting point. Uh, then I'm going to go to number two, and then I'm going to go to number three. And there's our two triangles, all right? So we have zero, one, two, and then we have zero, two, and three. All right, so let's go ahead and now do this in code. So we go back to our code. We now want a, um, a rectangle instead of a triangle, so we need to add another vertex. So I'm just going to copy this one here. And so this will be vertex uh, index number three. Need to add a comma right here at the end of this line just to make sure that the, um, the vertex elements are separate. Okay, and let's go ahead and bring the data over. So I need to look at the picture here. So vertex zero, we, we called a negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and I'm gonna go ahead and do this real quick. So this would be a negative 0 0.5. 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is one. Uh, index number two is 0.5, negative 0.5. And then finally, index number three is negative 0.5, negative 0.5. Uh, which we have right there. Okay, so that should be the vertex data. Let me go ahead and line up the comments here so they look correct. And I'm just going to make a note here uh, specifying what these vertices look like. So position is going to be three floats. And then color is going to be four floats. And then eventually we're going to have texture coordinates. And that'll be another two floats. Uh, but we don't have that quite yet, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, but when we start our sprite drawing, um, so we're kind of setting ourselves up for sprite drawing really is what we're doing here. So we're making the ability to draw quadrilaterals or rectangles, and then we're going to texture those rectangles with our sprite data. But here's our shape data right now. So we only need the vertices for the actual shape itself. We don't need the triangle data because the triangle data is going to be inside or the triangle order is going to be inside the index buffer. Okay, so now let's create our index buffer. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually create the indices in the RAM. So this is going to be an array of integers. I'm just going to call this indices. And just like we created this array up here uh, for vertices, we're going to do the same thing down here for our indices. And so let's go back to our picture. Uh, our index buffer is going to look like this. It's going to be index 0, 1, 2. So I'm just going to put 0, 1, and 2. And then it's going to go 0, 2, and 3. All right, so there's our indices in RAM. Now we need to send those to an index buffer on the graphics card, but we don't have an index buffer on the graphics card yet. So let's go ahead and create that. Uh, back at the top of our game class here, let's create a, an index buffer handle. Just like we created a handle for a vertex buffer, we're gonna do the same thing for our index buffer. Right under our vertex buffer creation, let's create the index buffer. And this is gonna follow the same pattern we did for our vertex buffer. Tell OpenGL we wanna generate a buffer. Let's bind the index buffer. Now, instead of using an array buffer, this is going to be an element array buffer. And the element array buffer is basically indicating to OpenGL that this buffer is going to be an index buffer, not a vertex buffer. Okay, and then we're going to pass in the handle to our index buffer. Now we need to buffer the data just like we did last time with our vertex buffer. Again, this is an element array buffer, not an array buffer. Uh, it wants the size in bytes, so that's just going to be the size of the index array times times the size of integer okay uh, next it wants the the actual data okay and that's just going to be the indices from our ram and then finally the buffer usage hint and we're just going to use static draw just like we did before and then finally i'm going to bind zero to the element array buffer just to unbind everything okay so that's it we have our index buffer created and we've sent the data to that index buffer so the, so the graphics card has the information we don't need to change any of our shader code. It's going to remain exactly the same because we're not changing anything about the way the vertices are. We're just changing the order in which we render them. Let's go ahead and make sure we delete the resources we created on the graphics card. So first, I'm going to make sure that there is no buffer bound to the element array buffer. So that'll just pass in zero there for the index. And then let's delete the buffer. And then we just need to pass in the handle to our index buffer. OK, so that's it for that. Uh, finally, we just need to scroll down here to our drawing code and change a couple things. 
After we bind our vertex array, we're going to bind the element array buffer or the index buffer. Okay, so the target is an element array buffer and then give it the handle to our index array. Now, the next thing we need to do is change this, uh, this draw code here. So this draw function here, draw arrays, only works with vertex buffers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that code. And instead, we're gonna make a call to uh, draw elements. Um, now, just like we did before, it wants the primitive type, and that's just gonna be triangles. But it's gonna be a little bit different here. Now, it wants the count, which is the number of elements to be rendered. And all that is, is it's the total number of indices that we want to render. In our case, that is six. We have 0, 1, 2, and 0, 2, 3. So I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to specify the number six as the number of indices that we want to draw. And if we're drawing with a primitive type triangles, this number should be a multiple of three. It should always be a multiple of three because every three indices is going to be a new triangle. All right, so the next parameter is the type, and that's going to be integer. So I'm going to put unsigned integer, and that's just making reference to this data here. So we're specifying our data as integers, and so I'm just telling it here that we are using integers. And then finally, it wants um, the actual data here, but we already specified the data in our index buffer, so I'm going to put zero. We don't need to put anything there since I created it previously up here, and then I'm binding that index buffer here, I don't need to specify anything for this last parameter. Okay, so that should be everything we need to do. Let's go ahead and run that and see what it looks like. All right, perfect, there it is. That is our rectangle using uh, vertex buffer and index buffer. And it looks good. Uh, the only thing is I'm specifying blue for the last two vertices. Let's go ahead and change that. So so it looks a little bit nicer. Um, right here's our last vertex. I'm gonna make this a yellow color and yellow is a combination of red and green. So let's change the red component to one, the green component to one, and then the blue component we're gonna make zero. All right, so that should be a yellow now. All right, there we are. So that's how you use uh, index buffers to draw shapes very efficiently. So next time I'd like to use um, screen space to specify our vertices instead of normalized device coordinate space. So next time let's change the vertex shaders to transform vertices from screen space to normalized device coordinate space to make it a little bit easier to store our vertices. But uh, that's how you create and use an index buffer.